In this episode, we're going to set up our Laravel application so that it returns a single page no matter what URL our users request. Effectively, we'll be telling PHP to hand over any front-end responsibility to JavaScript. OK, so let's start by having a look at our route slash web.php file. Going to hide the sidebar for now. No, OK. So at the moment, whenever we hit the slash route, we get a welcome view. So let's try that. OK, so paparazzi. OK, so that's what we get. Now I want to hit this page no matter what I type. So if I type slash foobar, instead of having a 404 not found, I want to find that same page. Basically, I want JavaScript to catch any of these errors and not PHP. So that's quite simple. Um, next to slash get, we're just going to have a parameter called any. And we're going to define any so that it can be anything where any that slash. So that's the regex expression that says it can just be anything. It can be one character, two character, it can be nothing, it can be letters, it can be numbers, it can be absolutely anything you want. So now if I go back to my foobar page, I refresh, and fair enough, I see our welcome page. So let's try something different. Uh, blah, blah slash without anything. Let's try something more complicated, a slash b slash c. Yeah, everything works. OK, so one tiny change I'd like to make here is there is a shortcut if you're only going to return a view, which is view slash any. And then here you just return the name of the view you want to provide. So here will be welcome. So that does exactly the same thing. And let's just make sure it does refresh. Yeah, that works fine. Slash works fine as well. OK, so we've basically created a route that takes care of launching our single page application. Now let's define that page. Instead of calling it welcome, I'd like to call it app. Then I'm going to go to my welcome.play.php. And I'm actually going to name it from welcome app. So as you can see, we have a bunch of style here that we don't need. We have the body and all of that is just a default page provided by Laravel and we don't need any of it. So we're just going to remove that. This is my content here. We're going to remove the style. We don't need that font. And we can rename our title Paparazzi. Next, we actually need our app.css and our app.js files to be loaded in this page. So we'll add a script tag that will link to our JavaScript file. So js slash app.js. And we'll mark it at defer so that it loads once the body is ready. Next, we add our app.css file, so link CSS, here I go. And we'll make that use mix as well. OK. So the reason I'm using mix and not the traditional asset uh, helper function from Laravel is because when I use mix, it will fetch the path of those documents from the mix manifest directly. So when I use hot reloading, it will automatically know the latest version of the file. And that should be .css, sorry about that. Now, if you look at our bootstrap file on the previous episode, when we loaded the Vue.js preset, it added this check for a tag, a meta tag called CSRF token. So in order for this not to generate an error, let's go ahead and add that tag to our single page. So. OK, so now we should have a pretty simple page with nothing in it except from content here. And if I have a look at my console, um, we can see that it is loading our app.js file and an app.css. So it appears that 
these are still the old version, so we need to recompile the assets. But before I do that, I just need to fix a little typo that I made last time. I'm sure you saw that. Um, so this should be compiling some plain CSS and not some SAS. But since we'll be using post CSS in the next video, when we set up Tailwind CSS, let's use it now. And now we should update our dependencies using npm install and recompile our assets using npm run dev. Okay, so now if I refresh the page, we can see that it's using the right files because the app.css is empty as it should. Something else that we can see in the console is that it cannot find the element of id app. And that's because when we start our view application, we're telling it to mount on an element that has an id app and it can't find that. So let's add it to our app.blade.php. And I should be happy. So now we've done it. We've delegated all the PHP responsibility to Vue.js, but we still need to tell Vue.js to display something, right? So on our app.js, we need to tell our viewer instance to render a component that we're going to call app. And we're going to import it, even though it doesn't exist just yet. So import app from component slash app. So now we need to create that. And we'll just write another div that says content here again. Okay, so now if I recompile the assets again and I refresh, we should see our content, but this time it is being displayed from that app component. Now, in order to avoid having to recompile our assets all the time, uh, I'm going to run npm run hot on a new tab. And now if I refresh that page and I edit something. Now without refreshing, it will automatically update the page. Okay, so as usual, let's open the GitHub desktop and see what modification we've made. So we've started by creating a route that launches the SPA so that anything that the user requests will render our app.blade.php file, which quite simply um, loads the JavaScript in the CSS and delegates all front-end responsibility to Vue.js. Regarding Vue.js, we created a new app component, and that's where all of the content of our SPA is going to be. Finally, we have registered that component on our app.js file through the render function. One last thing I'd like to mention is that in the context of this course, uh, our Laravel application will actually be responsible of starting the single page application, as well as acting as an API that allows client server communication. However, in most uh, single page application that you'll find in production, the Laravel application usually only takes care of uh, the API side of things. It only takes care of exchanging information with the client. And the Vue.js application is defined in another repository completely independent from Laravel. The advantage of that is that you can have two servers. You can have a server that will provide all of your static assets, so your JavaScript, your CSS, your static images, etc. And on the other side, you can have a server that will only take care of the information exchange protocol. And that approach is really nice because on the static server, you can have lots of assets optimization. You can use deploying tools like Netlify, etc. And that way, the workload of the API server is reduced, which means it can handle more requests per second, etc. So we're not doing this in this course because I think it's clearer for me to teach everything within one repository so that we can have a full view of what's happening. Um, but in the future, maybe I'll do a module on how to actually deploy the application, in which case I will separate the front end from the back end. Okay, see you in the next video where we'll be setting up Tailwind CSS.